We start, though, with the COVID-19 situation. South Korea is continuing to see record-breaking daily infections. Today's tally forecast to top 50,000 for the first time. This comes as the country's new home treatment system is set to launch today. For more on this, our reporter Choi min -jung is here in the studio with us. Good morning, min -jung. Good morning. So let's start with the local tally for today. We're expecting another record high. That's right, Mogyeon. Daily cases are soaring at a very rapid pace. From midnight to 9 p.m. on Wednesday, South Korea saw more than 48,000 cases. This is up by around 7,400 cases from the day before. So we are forecast to see the number of new infections comfortably surpass the 50,000 mark today. Health authorities have said that once daily uh, cases exceed 50,000, hospitals will be able to put COVID-19 patients in regular wards if hospitals run out of negative pressure units. Officials said that doctors may also consider temporarily treating regular patients using non-contact method, and medical workers who are infected may still come to work wearing masks after a couple of days. And starting today, self-treatment for people infected with COVID-19 uh, gets underway, so tell us more about that. That's right, Mark. Um, with the spread of Omicron, around 90% of new infections are asymptomatic or showing mild symptoms. So the majority of people infected are recovering from home. As we know, they have been divided into two groups, the intens intensive management group and the regular management group. While people over 60 and those receiving COVID-19 oral treatment are monitored by the hospital, those under 60 must look after themselves. They won't be subject to regular monitoring, but they will be able to conduct non-contact treatment by calling a local hospital or clinic when they experience symptoms. Home treatment call centers will also operate 24-7. The Korea Medical Association says around 1,700 medical institutions are currently participating in this new system, and more than 3,000 institutions have shown willingness to participate. It added that this is enough to manage more than 180,000 people recovering from home. Now, Min Jong, turning to the vaccination front, we heard that yesterday the Novavax vaccine has been distributed for the first time in the country. That's right, Mogyan. The first batch of U.S. drug maker Novavax's COVID-19 vaccine has become available in the country on Wednesday. 292,000 doses were released, and the country is expecting 2 million doses to be distributed this month. And this is part of the 40 million doses the country plans on um, distributing in total. The vaccine is being produced by local company SK Bioscience and is the third to be manufactured and distributed in South Korea after AstraZeneca and Moderna's vaccine. But it is the first um, protein subunit vaccine to be manufactured in the country. This means that it, is use, um, it uses a more traditional method like those used to develop vaccines for hepatitis B and cervical cancer. So watchers say there are fewer concerns about side effects. Officials have also said it is relatively easier to distribute the vaccine, even abroad if necessary, as it can be stored between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. The vaccine is said to be administered to those over 18 years old who have yet to be vaccinated, and people who haven't had the booster shot due to side effects from the first two doses are also eligible. Authorities are set to announce details on its inoculation plans later in this afternoon. So those of us here in South Korea are undergoing this transition phase since Omicron has become the dominant strain here in South Korea. And as a result of that, the authorities are tailoring their antivirus uh, measures. So fill us in on that. Right. That's um, one of the changes that may occur is the QR code check-in system. Currently, people have to use check-ins um, using QR codes or write down their personal information when going to public venues. Uh, this data was used to keep track of the movements of the infected people. But the government says that it is not as necessary as it is now shifting towards a more Omicron-tailored strategy, focusing on high-risk patients and cohabitants of the infected. Earlier, the government also implemented a self-survey system where infected people can fill out a epidemiological surveys by, by themselves instead of being asked by public health workers. Another potential change they may be introduced is the age requirement for COVID-19 pills, as authorities are considering allowing people under 40 who are at high risk to receive oral treatment as well. Earlier this month, officials lowered the age bracket to 50. Right, Min Jung, thank you so much for your report. Talk to you again tomorrow. Thank you.